lahu Damashe Hana hayau Le ahudo Dat marlan Ina natu mashikha Bara de haleha Anea na Good fuck Aslam. Just as he said. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We are finishing a series that we began a few weeks ago about the cross and the resurrection called Rescue. And I want to finish it today with a titled message, All Things New Forever. John chapter 20, verse 11 now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. See, real trauma naturally blinds our heart. And we don't have the ability to see hope beyond our hurt, even when it comes right in front of us. And when that happens, we need a compassionate question that comes from one who has experienced scars but is now living in resurrection reality. And that question can penetrate our soul and lead us back to hope again. And that's what Jesus did. Verse 15, he asked her, woman, 
Why are you crying? What is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. And I love this next verse. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And one day, believer... We will see him with our very own eyes. Because he is risen, he is coming back for us. Let's welcome him this morning. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we believe. Lord, I believe. We ask you that the Holy Spirit would fill this place with resurrection life, with resurrection faith that you would bring glory to Jesus himself. For we believe that he has risen. And so it's in his living name we pray. Amen. Resurrection. It's preached so you and I can have an anchor of hope in this life. The resurrection of Jesus anchors my life to faith that One day, there will be a new morning sun, and it will rise forever and never set again. Until then, we put our faith in what we cannot see, because he came out of the grave. Resurrection is preached so that we can experience in the now. The ministry of the Holy Spirit to us. Because Jesus said that when he ascends to the Father, he would send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would be a living representation, presence, and witness of Jesus Christ's life until he comes back again. And so, resurrection means that the Holy Spirit of God that created the world and raise Jesus of Nazareth from the grave, is in the world and in the church. And when we gather together, He is with us. And He is here today to lead us all into all things new, and it can be forever because He lives. Believers have a new I am morning forever. If you're a believer, and I'm a believer You have a new, I am morning forever. Jesus came into the world to offer anyone and everyone what anyone and everyone, know it or not, have always been looking for, him. God didn't offer us a plan. He didn't offer us a program. He offered us his son. And to know Jesus is to love him. And to experience Jesus is everlasting life. Jesus meets the deepest needs of every heart. John 6, 35, he said, I will feed your soul every single day. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 8, 12. I will light your path every single day. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light 
of life. Jesus said, I will protect your walk every single day because I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved or safe. So safe that you can go in and you can go out and find pasture. Our job is to eat what he feeds. His job is to protect us from the evil one. Safe every day. John 10, 11. I will Psalm 23 your life every single day. You know what? I hear Psalm 23 uh, spoken most of the time at someone's funeral. You know what we ought to do is we ought to speak it while we're living. Because it's a living promise. It's a living promise. I will Psalm 23 your life every single day. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You and I can wake up every morning knowing God is saying, I got you every single day. John 15, 5, I will release the kingdom through you every single day. Because he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. John eleven twenty five. 25, even if you die, your life will get better. Listen to that. Even if you die, your life will get better. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Today is my dad's birthday. He's been in heaven since the Tuesday after Easter 2001. And you know what I know? He is more alive now than I've ever known him in my life to be alive. And if you have loved ones who held to the hand of Jesus in this life, they are, they are more alive now than they ever were here. And life gets better for the believer after they die because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And even though you die, yet shall you live. Pretty good, huh? John 14, 6. I will keep the door open so you can be with my Father every single day. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want a Father like relationship with God, you can only get it through Jesus. He said, I am. Let me tell you something. Jesus made these promises when he was living on the earth over 2,000 years ago. And let me tell you something. If he dies and doesn't come back from the tomb, those promises are not relevant. Those promises are not real, and actually they're lies. Why tap into any of those promises if he doesn't come back from the tomb? Nobody's going to answer the phone. Nobody's home. But Christ rose. And the Holy Spirit is in the world now. So that means Jesus' promises he made then are alive now. And every believer can experience every I am promise in 2019, in 3019, in 4019, because of the resurrection, Jesus is the I am, not the I was. He is the I am. If you have hunger in your soul, go to the I am. If you need light on your path, go to the I am. If you need protection, walk under the shadow of the I am. Isn't that awesome? I didn't mean I'm preaching all this. I said, isn't that awesome? <laughs> I mean, that other's a given, right? But anyway, because he lives, because he lives, we can wake up every morning with no need to seek the living among the dead. The world is looking for fulfillment of bread of the soul in dead things. The world is looking for life where no life exists. Sadly, some of the believers are too. 
Are you walking through the valley of the shadow of death? Do you want goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life? Then follow the I am. You want your head to be anointed with Holy Spirit oil so that there's a fresh presence of God on your life? One who watches over you, who never slumbers or sleeps, follow the I am. You long for kingdom life to flow in you, to you, and through you, so your life will matter 200,000 years from now? Wake up in the vine. If you're in the last days of your life, you hold to his hand, he will walk you across the Jordan into an upgrade. Where no eye has seen and no ear has heard, and it hasn't even entered into the mind the things that God has prepared for those who love him. You need a good, good father? When my dad died on Tuesday after Easter, the last time I saw him was on a Sunday night. Yeah, we were one of those churches back with Paul and Peter and James and John. We had Sunday night church. And we had Sunday night church, and we had pews like Peter, James, and John. had. Pew. And, and I came in here. There was nobody here. I did, my dad parked down around the side. I didn't see his truck. And you wouldn't forget his truck because his truck was junk. But anyway... My dad, I didn't see him, and I came in here, the, the, everything was shut down, the lights were off, and I came up here to just do something, get the platform ready, and, and I turned, and, and my dad was kneeling on his knees right there, right there, praying for God to bless the service. That's the last picture I have of my father on this earth before he passed away. What a gift my dad left for me. I don't have to live one day wondering where he is. You, if you don't give anything else to your kid, give him the uncertainty that he's with Jesus if your parent or if your loved one passes away. I sat right there where Tim Wharton is before the memorial service. I was here by myself, and I was weeping. My heart was breaking. My dad was my right-hand man. And I said, God, you're going to have to become my father now. And he whispered, I've always been your father, and now you're going to see you on full display. Jimmy. He's a good, good father. You're looking for a father to hold you and give you the how much mores that Jesus said he wanted to give us? Wake up every morning with the I am. The resurrection of Jesus validates those I am promises. And the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the cold stone slab is the same Spirit that brings the I am promises to us if we'll believe them today. We can wake up every morning with no need to seek the living among the dead. We've been rescued, been resurrected in Christ. A new I am. Also, a new view of life forever. Jesus said to the disciples, probably just days into the calling, you will see greater things than these. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Jimmy Page would strut across the stage with his guitar, and Robert Plant would talk about she's buying a stairway to heaven. Well, she didn't buy it, and that stairway won't get you there. He bought it. And for those who walk with him, for those who walk with him, he promises an open heaven. We can see with our eyes heavenly activity. I will give you the same power I gave my first followers, he says to the church in LOH. I will make you fishers of men. I will build my church. I will be with you to the end of the age. Seeing God at work in the world keeps faith and hope and love alive in my life and in your life. It's all about seeing God at work. 
And he promises a new view of life forever. Since Jesus rose from the grave, I think about this all the time. Since Jesus rose from the grave, we have been given Eden-like hearts. What's that mean? To imagine and dream and see. Nothing can kill your soul like the death of your dream. But you know what? We serve a resurrected dream maker. The spirit that raised up Jesus and raised us with Jesus, you know what he knew? He opens the eyes of our heart to see the king's creative intentions in the world. And by faith we move. For we are the brush, and the world is the canvas. Let me ask you a question. Are you dreaming the dream? So the Holy Spirit asks you this morning, are you dreaming Jacob's dream? Do you see a ladder reaching up to heaven? There is one. It's where Jesus is. Do you know angels fill the air? In this church, Peter said angels long to look in when the gospel's preached. You'll never see them with your eyes. See them with the eyes of your heart. See, Jacob dreamed about someone who was the way to heaven, God's own son. And you know what the Lord's prayer is for you? That someday in your heart, his dream for you will come true because the resurrection gives us eyes, new vision. He raises us up to dream a good dream, a God dream. That's what he said to Nathaniel. You want to come with, you come with me? He refers them to the latter, Jacob's story. You're going to see. You are going to see. And if he said it to them, he's saying it to us. And if you're a believer, the only time you will sleep will be at your death. And when you die, he comes himself and will wake us up. And we will see with our eyes what we've dreamt of him our whole life long. See, Friday and Saturday, the disciples had eyes stamped with death and trauma and loss. And it was real. It was real. It was real. I don't like to post on Friday that Sunday's coming. You know why? Because we need to, we need to process through our traumas if we're ever going to have a true significant healing from our traumas. And a lot of us just flip it to Sunday. But I want to tell you, God was dead on Friday. And Saturday. And sometimes we move too quickly and expect too much from people who have had trauma stamped so deeply in their soul, not just for a Friday and a Saturday, but for 20 years and 30 years. As Brooke said, have you ever prayed knowing in your heart that God was going to heal your friend and that they died anyway? Have you ever prayed like me on a night before we turned off the machine with people calling from all over the country with prophetic words that said God's going to raise up your dad and you thought you felt the Holy Spirit only to have to turn off the machine. And minutes before, someone called me and said, don't turn it off. The Lord told me to tell you, don't turn it off because they quote a scripture. Have you ever walked through that before? I walked through such trauma that from 2001 until last year, I never preached one message from the scriptures on miracles and healing. And I apologize to this church over that because the Lord kindly brought me to a place where he told me, in spite of your trauma and your experience, I have not given you the freedom to be an arbitrator over my word. You don't get to judge what to preach based off your experience or lack of. 
See, Mary, Lazarus' sister, put in a call to Jesus. The one you love is dying. And he didn't come. And when he did come, and Mary heard that Jesus was near the tomb, that Mary didn't go to the tomb to see Jesus. You know why? Because of the trauma of Jesus not being Jesus. Sometimes we see our death as a death when God is going to do something to make it the beginning of a brand new part of the story of our life. Some of us need a touch from the Lord to see past our traumas and our troubles. Do you notice how Jesus asked the question to Mary at the tomb? He didn't upbraid her. He didn't try to push a faith scripture in her face. He just asked her a gentle question. Why are you crying? It could be this question. Why are you angry? It could be, why are you hurting? Why do you feel let down? In that moment when the Lord asks the question, he's not looking for you to put on a mask and go, by his stripes I'm healed. No, you're not. You're not. You're sick. And he wants to go there. I just lost half the charismatics when I just said that. You know, when you're hurting, you can hurt and you can close in or you can start lashing out. There are people who have been sincerely hurt. And now all they can see about the church is how it doesn't measure up. And all they can see about Christians is how they don't measure up. And they're always talking about what's up with Herod and the hypocritical priesthood. Because the past was real and it defined and defines you. Some weep, some criticize. Some continually speak out of tears and sorrow and some out of bitterness and judgmentalism. All because the eyes of their heart are still stamped in the death. And Jesus... Because he's cool. Because he's compassionate. He comes onto our road to Mary. He told Martha, go tell her to come to me. Martha goes and says, the teacher is calling for you. And Mary gets up and runs. Friend, you're here, you're hurt, you're hurt, you're hurt. And if, and if you told your story to me, I'd probably want to shut down and not finish and just cry with you, pray with you. But there's something more because Jesus calls you out to the tomb. He's about to roll the stone away. He's about to allow the stink to be smelled and then a new story to begin. He's walking on the road to Emmaus with two disciples, the resurrection morning, and he, you know what he says to them? He says he knows the answer. He says to them, why are your hearts so downcast? Why are you so slow to believe? I'm being kind. He actually said, oh, foolish ones. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you off the hook there. Me too. I don't need that every time. You know what he was saying? It's morning. It's a word of, to someone. There is a gift of grace coming by the funeral home of your faith today. Jump in. And even you will see heaven open. Since Jesus rose from the grave, we have been given Eden-like hearts to imagine and dream and see. The spirit that raised up Jesus raised us with Jesus to open the eyes of our heart to see the king's creative intentions. And by faith we move. We become a brush. And the world is the canvas. 
rescued by the resurrection so that believers can have a new hope for life even beyond the grave. 2 Corinthians 5, 8, we live with a joyful confidence, yet at the same time we take delight in the thought of leaving our bodies behind to be at home with the Lord. I love that, at home. You know where home is? With the Lord. This isn't our home. John 5, 25, Jesus said, I speak to you in eternal truth. Soon the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will arise with life. John eleven twenty five 25, and 26, I am the resurrection and the life. I am life eternal. Anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. And the one who lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? You know who the greatest evangelists of the next generation will be? Will be the people who actually believe the I am's of Jesus. John 5, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. And this is one of my favorites, especially on this day, my dad's birthday. I tell you this, my brothers and sisters. Listen, I tell you a mystery. Not all of us will die, but we will all be transformed. Come on now. Bring the charismatics back in the room now. Come on. Come on. I'm one of them, by the way. It will happen in an instant, in the twinkling of his eye. For when the last trumpet is sounded, the dead will come back to life. We will be indestructible, transformed. We will discard our mortal clothes and slip into a body that is imperishable. And we will be changed into immortality. Man, come on now. This life is not the end. Death for the believer is gain when, not if, when he comes through the clouds and the skies roll back like a scroll. He will call us all, rise, can you imagine? And the bodies of the dead in the graves in Christ will rise from their graves. Paul said, and those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up. The word means to grab and Bring up. Let me do that again. Grab and bring up. Well, I'll do it three times in the 11 o'clock. But those who are alive and remain will be caught up together into the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air? Do you believe this still? Do we still believe? To meet the Lord in the air? And we will forever be with the Lord. Look at your neighbor and go like this. Do you hear what that says? My father... Maybe your mom, your dad, maybe your loved one, maybe your child. Their spirit is right now in the presence of Jesus. You know what? You know what they feel in every fiber of their being? I'm home. Man, I'm home. I am home. This is an upgrade. This is gain. Where was I before? What was I doing before I died? What? Huh? Serious? I'm not playing. I'm not playing. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Jesus said, you're going to be with me in a place called paradise. That's not south of uh, Myrtle Beach. Eye has not seen, friend. Ear has not heard. It's never entered the mind of man. And God takes every believer there until the day he comes in the clouds and he calls our body, even though it's left with nothing, nothing left but dust in some cases. Nothing left but dust. 
And somehow, miraculously, it will rematerialize. And that body will come out of the grave and meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with him forever, ever, ever, ever. I said, we, 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 believers. Because he came out of that grave, you're going to come out of yours. Here's the thing. Everyone lives forever. Everyone lives forever. Believers, unbelievers. Christians, non-Christians. Everyone lives forever. You are a spirit in a body. You're not a body with a spirit. You're a spirit in a body. Your spirit will live forever. And everyone lives forever. But you just have to choose where, my friend. Let me ask you, have you been rescued? Jesus is And he is the one we've all been looking for and longing for our whole life long. And we can wake up every morning, and we don't have to seek the living among the dead. He is not where dead things are. He's not there. And what you're really looking for, even if you don't know it, is the one who made your soul. He's risen, and his I am statements made 2,000 years ago plus are now an ever-present living promise. And everyone's going to live forever. We have to choose where. We have to choose where. Let me ask you, are you rescued? Live stream, are you rescued? The Titanic sank in this month, many, many years ago. Probably everybody's watched the movie. It's a scene in the movie that shakes me. You know, they filled the lifeboats, not even half. They didn't even fill them halfway. You know why? They didn't think they'd need one. Because even God, even God couldn't sink the Titanic. That's what they said. That's no joke. That's what they said. They didn't need lifeboats. Until they did. And when the Titanic sunk to the bottom of the Atlantic, people died in that water from the cold temperatures. You know, hours and hours and hours before the Titanic hit the iceberg, there was another ship that passed by the iceberg, missed it, and sent a message to Titanic to warn them of icebergs ahead. You know what Titanic's response was? Listen, this is like some people that are in church this morning all over the world listening to the gospel, and you're hearing about iceberg ahead. And here's how the Titanic responded to the warning. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Tim, man, thanks. That was a great message. Back to the crap shooting table in the bottom of the Titanic. Back to sleep in the cabin. There's a scene in the movie where one of the crewmen can't take it anymore. They've they've gone away. They've they've sailed off. They've rowed away. And he, he stands up in the scene. He says, let's go back. Let's go back. And they make their way back and he's standing there. I felt the Holy Spirit, one of the strongest moves of the Spirit of my life was watching the Titanic because it hit me as a preacher of the gospel. That man is standing up and he's screaming, is anybody still alive? Remember? Can anybody hear me? Rose, she had a whistle. I wish we would have passed out whistles at the door today. (laughs) Because this would be the moment. Can you imagine the dramatic moment? How did, how did Rose blow that whistle? She didn't want her sal- she didn't want her savior to pass her by. Because she knew she was going to die. She knew time was short. Hyperthermia was setting in. There was no time to lose. Rose, if you're here, blow the whistle.
Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While others now are calling, do not pass me by. They told the blind man, quit bothering the Lord. He's on his way to somewhere. He cries even louder, have mercy on me. Are you rescued? You have to make a... Everyone lives forever. They just have to choose where. You have to choose. How do you do that? Peter said, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Well, we can't save ourselves but one way. How do you do that? You have to repent. You have to turn to God. Face the fact you're dying. Face the fact that sin has separated you and will kill you and judge you for eternity. But you turn and he will wipe your sins away and times of refreshing come from Jesus. And he's in heaven, the Bible says, until heaven restores everything on earth. And Paul said, God overlooked our ignorance. God overlooked your ignorance about this, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he's appointed. And he has given proof of this to everyone because he raised him from the dead. And one day the sea will give up the dead in it. And the grave will give up the dead in it. And everyone will stand before God and be judged on the choice they made in this life regarding the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is a forever mourning for those who have been made alive with Christ because he's rescued them here, down, under. But for those who've rejected this offer of grace and forgiveness, seriously, rejected it, thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Pastor. Love your church. For those who reject it, who don't deem Christ worthy to bow their own knee in repentance and confession, every person will M O U. R N M O U R N forever. Why would anybody choose that when the I am is still calling to those far away and to those who are near? I am the bread you are looking for. I am the light you long for. I am your life. I will, I got you. I'll bring life out of your death. I'll bring a story out of your misery. Why are you separated from me? Holy Spirit of God. Everyone stand, please. Holy Spirit of God. The tomb is empty. All things new forever. I pray that you would move throughout this room and across this mysterious, unbelievably advanced marvel called the Internet. In real time, draw people to Jesus. Out of the darkness, off the the course heading to an iceberg that they can arrive home. For everybody in the faith that is sorrowing today, legitimate hurt, comfort them today outside that place where the stone's been rolled away. You're here today the Savior, softly and tenderly, is calling you home to Him. He's not holding your sins against you. He paid for them. They're all, every one, paid for. All He's holding out to you right now is His hand. Say, come to me. I'll never turn you away. Turn to me. Front row to back row. 
Would you slip up your hand? Everybody praying. Everybody praying in the room. Every Christian praying. Everybody praying. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor Tim, would you pray a prayer for me? I don't want to leave this place the way I came. I want Jesus not in my head. I want him in my heart. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Hold it up. I see you. Raise your hand. Hold it up. I see it. Back. Over here. I see you. Let's pray. Just pray. In your heart. In your heart, pray this. Jesus, I believe you're alive. I believe you've personally invited me today. You've come closer than I could ever have expected you to come close and gotten really straight and real and loving, merciful to me. You've awakened me to something I've been passing by, and it's deep in my heart, and I don't want to turn from it. This, this opportunity to get out and get in is mine right now, and I'm going to seize it. Jesus, would you forgive me of all my sins? Jesus, I'm standing by faith at the foot of your cross, and I believe that you died for me, for me, for me, for me. I believe that, that you paid it all for me, and I receive it. I turn to you, not from you. I'm not going to live a life turning from you anymore. I'm turning to you, but I need you to do something. I can't live a Christian life by my strength. And friend, he has an answer for that. It's called the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift, the gift from God. Lord, I pray for everybody who prayed that prayer, that the power that raised Jesus from the dead would come into their, the temple of their soul and fill them with resurrection life. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Old things pass away. All things become new. All things become new. We're going to close this service today, inviting anybody. We don't have very much room, but if you'd like to come for prayer, please feel free. Probably with all the crowd, we're going to stand. and Let's sing a song of worship to close this service today. Remember, eyes to see. The I am is alive. And Lord, we love you. Lord, we celebrate eternal life in this life and in that to come. In Jesus' name, let's sing. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Sing it out. Who the sun sets free. Who is free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Yeah, let's celebrate. Ransomed, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, he's free.
Easter. We love you guys. Hope to see you next week. God bless you.